How's it going folks? Down the back here today because I'm going to harvest the garlic in the veggie pod and also the stuff that we were growing on the deck. Uh, just some small bulbs for the greens and yeah, just give you a bit of a look at uh, the sort of yield we got. But what I thought I'd do first though is uh, give you a bit of a flashback in time and give you a bit of an explanation about growing garlic in warmer climates and a little bit of information just about the different varieties and whatnot. And then I'll show uh, these guys, both lots being planted out earlier on in the year and then we'll get into the harvest itself and uh, fingers crossed we're going to have a half decent yield. I'm actually not holding out much hope. Uh, these guys are a little bit neglected this season, but yeah, um, I'll take what I can get. But anyway, let's jump back a, um, a couple of years to hear what I got to say about garlic. So here in the subtropics, because it is a little bit warmer than the southern garlic growing regions, we tend to go for the soft neck varieties that belong to either the artichoke or the silver skin families. There's actually nine um, hard neck varieties, but yeah, you can look them up online if you're interested to see what they are. So because of our climate and also how close we are to the equator, we are better off growing the daylight neutral varieties. Um, in the onion family, you can get um, daylight neutral, uh, short daylight and long daylight varieties. Basically what that means is um, you require a certain amount of daylight to trigger the plant to start setting a bulb. The other variety, the hardneck variety, they actually send up a flower scape that can look quite funky at times. It can do a 360 loop or just look all twisty and turny uh, and at the top of that little flower um, spike you'll end up with a cluster of bulbules and in between those bulbules you'll end up with some little flowers, garlic flowers themselves. Now um, those little bulbules can be taken off and planted out and next season you'll get what's generally um, called a garlic round. It's just a round solid clove of garlic that you can eat or save again and plant out the next year to get a nice full bulb of garlic with a number of cloves in it. Just quickly getting back to the little bulbules, uh, some varieties of the soft neck like the Glen Large we grow, they'll actually grow uh, a couple of bulbules just up from the bulb themselves like this one here from last year. Um, they set these little bulbules in the pseudo stem that comes up and um, forms the stalk that the leaves grow from in the soft neck varieties. And these little bulbules can be taken off as well and planted out just like the ones you get from the hard neck flower heads. Uh, the, the probability is these guys will grow a little round um, next year and you know we might save them an experiment and see if we can get a full clove of garlic the following year. Before we hook into the harvest I'll give you a bit of a gander at how these two were planted out. So the varieties we're using are some Glen Large garlic which we bought as seed bulbs. Uh, they're really good for our climate here and also some Australian grown shop bought garlic we saw on sale. Uh, not too sure how well it will do in our climate but we just needed a few extra cloves just to fill out the bed. What I did to prep them was I broke them into the individual cloves and then I popped them in a kelp and by uh, potassium bicarbonate solution just to let them soak overnight. Uh, the kelp is supposed to help them set roots and the potassium bicarbonate is an antifungal and so I added that in there just in case there was a fungal issue with the ones that we bought from the shop. So I let them soak overnight in the kelp solution and I noticed on the store-bought um, cloves that we started to see little nubs of roots, for the want of a better word, nubs will fit, um, start to form on them so we knew they right to go and on the purchased cloves the seed garlic we noticed a, f a couple of very small roots so we knew they were right to go as well uh, they were just basically popped into these beds I think there's six rows six rows of six so 36 cloves and then um, yeah I put the store-bought ones along the back and then the purchased bulbs along the front and I fit a, uh, an extra four cloves in and a few others as well so uh, that's where that lot of garlic was planted out I saved about four or five bulbs of garlic from last year's crop. I planted a, probably two or three bulbs worth of cloves out into a small little five gallon or 16 litre root pouch. And I definitely over planted them, um, stuck them in a bit of a concentric circle sort of design. And what we're going to do with them is grow them as garlic greens. And they're just growing up on the deck in our little potted garden area. Um, so there will be something we just um, nip out and chop off some greens, let them grow back and just throw them into stir fries and salads and that sort of thing. So there you go, here's a bit of a look at how the pod and the pouch were planted out. Now as for um, care and maintenance through the year, um, they didn't really get a lot. I think I fed them twice with a kelp feed. Um, so I'm not really holding out much hope for a bumper harvest, uh, especially with these guys here, because I mainly just um, nipped off 
to give us some small greens that went into things like sand choy bao and salads and towards the end we actually forgot about them and started using the chives instead. So how I'm going to go about this is uh, we'll start with the veggie pod and I'm just going to fossick around with my hands. So to begin with I suppose we'll start in this corner down here. Now there were six rows of six but I had some extra ones that I um, popped in as well. This is one of the um, the Glen Large ones that we bought as a seed garlic. Uh, not looking like he put on much growth there. There we go there's another one and again not real large. Four, five, there's two there. So I think that's all from this front area. And now we're getting on to the plants grown with store-bought bulbs. They just looked a little bit healthier and larger than the um, Glen Large seed garlic we got. Not a bad little handful there. I'm just going to try and segregate these guys. Oh yeah, these garlics don't look like they've um, held together too well in the bulb form. Now I was trying to get this bed to dry out so I hadn't been watering it for a while filling up the reservoir because I've turned it into a self-watering wicking bed um, rather than running it as a um, straight veggie pod. Um, so you can actually see how I've done that in the previous ones in this clip here and um, it is a little bit moist down there and I think maybe I've just left it a little bit too long and some of these garlics have rotted. Definitely not as good as some earlier harvests I've had. I suppose you take what you can get. Now over here, let's take all these loose tops off. Feed them to the mango tree, hey? So I'll bring you in closer to these last couple of rows. And yeah, all these um, garlics planted from shop bought here to have disintegrated in the soil. So we're going to have to give them a bit of a wash off. I don't think much of this garlic will save very long because they, they tend not to save very long without their paper. And yeah, just looking at this soil, it is just very mushy. And this one here, half of it's already started to rot in the bed. So uh, very disappointing. I uh, just left it far too long to harvest. So we'll pull out the good clove and just um, throw the rest of this under the mango tree, I think. Uh, this one here is uh, basically a lot of cloves that have decided to shoot themselves. So that's a little bit um, unfortunate as well. I dare say what's happened is I, when I dried the bed out, um, you know, it sort of triggered these guys to be ready for the next amount of water. And when we had rain a couple of weeks ago, I dare say it's um, decided to try and send up some shoots. So I'm not going to keep rabbiting on folks. I'm going to knock this off quickly so we can have a gander at the pouch and aquaponic harvest. On to harvesting this pouch here. So this will be a lot easier to harvest. I'll just pull most of them out while they're greens or they're browns. We actually have some garlic with dry skins on them. And yeah, I wasn't planning to grow a big crop of garlic with these guys. Um, they were far too small. Like I said, it was just for the greens. But it looks like it's given us a lot of these nice little um, garlic rounds. So I dare say if we keep these until next season, which I think I possibly could because they've got their papers on them, I might try growing a couple of these out then. Might give these a little bit of a clean up and pop them to one side until next year. So I thought while we're at it, we'll harvest um, three garlic from the aquaponic as well. Because these guys here, oh, these guys have actually got some uh, compost worms traveling around the roots of them. Uh, these guys here were put in pretty much all at the same time. And this one here has done what that other one did down the back. It started, uh, decided to split and shoot again. This one over here has pretty much all done the same thing. The clothes have decided to shoot independently. So yeah, not a fantastic harvest from the system here. Oh, there's actually a few more underneath this oregano over here. So I'll pull them as well. Oops. Another small clove. Another one. And this third one. Oh, it's broken apart in the bed, so I might just leave those clothes in there and we'll see if we get some um, garlic green sprouting. If not, the worms can finish them off. So there you go, those small bulbs I popped into the aquaponics um, gave us a small harvest, nothing too impressive, but I wasn't expecting much. Uh, we'll clean up the rest and uh, see what the final tally is. So there you go, folks. There's the harvest. Uh, we'll just run through. Uh, these are the Glen Large and they look to um, hold their paper a little bit better. 
than the store-bought variety and in fact I think some of these larger cloves in here may actually be from the store-bought variety that just got mixed up in the basket. Now these ones down here I think yeah um, a lot of them as you'll see in a minute uh, I just think they were left in the, um, the little bed here far too long. I should have probably harvested them about a month ago and we would have had much better results I think. Uh, these are the store-bought garlic. Um, pretty much all, all the paper I just blasted off them and I'm going to have to deal with these guys straight away. What I'm thinking is I'll take them upstairs, uh, just blanch them very quickly um, just to kill off any pathogens that may be on the outside of them and pop them in the freezer so we can just use it um, fresh frozen from the freezer whenever we need it. Uh, overall, yeah, it looks like the, the bulbs form fine. They, you know, grew us some nice cloves. But again, just didn't get them out in time and the soil is a little bit damp there. Uh, just to show you some of them here, they actually started to rot. So they're getting very squishy and very stinky. So any like that, I will be discarding. This one's already lost half of it. Um, it's really a real shame because the last crop of um, garlic that came out of this was very impressive. Um, it actually was planted out in that little section you saw before. Um, that was the prelude to them being planted out. So I'll pop a link um, at the end and also down in the description so you can go check out both of those videos. Uh, planting that garlic out and then the harvest at the end of the year. And I can guarantee you it is much better than these ones here. Uh, so that's it for the, um, the pod ones. Now over to the, first of all, the um, aquaponics, that's what it's called, aquaponics garlic. Uh, these were just some of the small cloves uh, left over from the Glen Large. I actually filmed these going in live on a um, live stream, um, so wasn't expecting too much from them. Um, I knew they would grow, uh, I just didn't know what sort of bulbs they'd form, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it's a yield, it's a harvest, I'll let these guys dry out. Uh, along with these ones still with the paper on them and see if we can yeah, just stretch out their longevity in the pantry. And these guys here have formed these little rounds. So I'm definitely going to be saving these for next year and I'll be planting them out, probably not in this veggie pod, but somewhere else to see if um, yeah, they do form a full bulb of garlic. So there's a bit of a lesson learned. Pick the garlic as soon as it starts to die off and don't leave it in a bed that is fairly moist. Uh, so yeah, if you do want to see a much better veggie pod crop of garlic, don't forget there is that link in the description and one will pop up at the end there uh, just to see how well it can actually grow ginger. Uh, ginger, sorry, garlic. Uh, but ginger leads me on to my next point. We're actually going to um, clean this bed out and set it up somewhere else around the yard and it will be growing a um, crop of ginger over our summer months and hopefully it'll do a lot better than the garlic there. So I would like to uh, thank you all for coming along and um, thumbing up the clips and leaving your comments down below. I really do enjoy chatting to you all and I really do need to thank those folks who are continuing to support us over on the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard supporters page. A bit of a heads up folks, the Podia have done a revamp and the site looks so much better now. Um, you can actually post your own content over there if you are a member. So check it out if you're interested. A little link will pop up at the end and there's one down in the description. So I'll give you one last look at the um, garlic harvest and pretty much we'll call it quits folks. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens are booming and you've got a better garlic harvest than me and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing. Just caught this baby mantis trying to crawl up into the garlic bed. Might relocate him to the aquaponics. Give him a fighting chance. There you go fella, off into the beans. Come on. <laughs> Doesn't want to leave me. Try and shake him off. This is going to be problematic. Managed to get him onto the beans. Hopefully he can take care of any aphids that turn up. <laughs>